Well, what is going on everybody? It's Steven here and welcome to another Samsung Galaxy S6 replica review. Now a little disclaimer, this is a replica from China, it's not a real one, it can't keep up with the real one and it doesn't reflect Samsung's build quality in any way. So yeah, um, we'll compare it with a real Samsung Galaxy S6, here the Edge version, because I want to show you the differences, how to spot a fake one and why the real one is just a superior device. Okay, so um, it's called the HDC S6. Please don't troll me again. It's called HDC, not TC. And that's because, I don't know, it's a Chinese company. So and they just replaced the T with a D. And this is the S6. Now, it's the improved version of the clone. I had a very early version a couple of weeks ago, but it was really crap. And here we have the updated version. And the quality level is still bananas, if you know what I mean. And today I want to um, show you guys um, how a $140 phone can perform and if it's worth it or not and why the S6 so the real one is definitely a great device. So let's get directly started, let's jump into it, link down below to the MTK smartphone factory if you want to check it out. But yeah, um, now let's just stop talking and let's get started. So first of all, let's have a quick look at the specs of the phone. Even though the same specs are printed on the real package and on the fake package, you get what you pay for, so you get much lower specs. Now the clone comes with the MTK6582 quad-core chipset. It's a quad-core CPU running at 1.3 GHz, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, everything integrated, a, yeah, a pretty low GPU, then 1 GB of RAM plus 8 GB of ROM, but the phone shows 3GB and 32GB, so this is spoofed. Now it comes with a 5.1 inch HD screen, it should be IPS and looks pretty decent. Now a 60 megapixel camera, but well, interpolated and also the pictures, they look really crappy as you will see later. You can use the original accessories, but no wireless charging. Then it should have Android 5, but actually it looks a lot like Android 5, but it's, um, I think it's KitKat because it shows the KitKat exploit. Then we have dual camera, yeah, front-facing camera, as you may know, 5 megapixels. It supports 2G and 3G, but no 4G. Okay, guys, so that are basically the main specs. So you see much lower, but also the price is only 20% of the retail price of a Samsung Galaxy S6. As always, guys, let's do a quick unboxing. Let's check out the differences here and on the accessories. Now, well, the box looks a bit different, like the color here, as you can see. So the left one is the real box, 64 gigabyte gold platinum. And also um, here, the color, as you can see, it's spelled different, like gold platinum and here platinum light gold. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's really a platinum light gold version, but yeah, that's the fake box. Also a good way to check if the device is fake or not, just have a look here at the quality ceilings. Now, you should have them on the real one, but here on the fake one you can see there is no ceiling, and I haven't seen any clone which comes here with quality seals. And that's basically the first thing where I can see, hey, that box or that device here is fake. So now let's open it up and let's have a look at that. Now the box here looks very identical, comes here with the Samsung logo. And let's see what we can find inside. So there we go, guys. Okay, first of all, we have that cardboard thing here. And in there you should find, oh yeah, I forgot, um, the flip cover. Well, um, the flip cover here, it looks a bit damaged from shipping. It was outside of the box, but um, it's actually compatible with the real one and the fake one because same dimensions. And I'm not sure what that is, maybe a magnet or something for um, the S-View window. Well, and yeah, um, it works also on the real one, but you can also use real accessories on the fake one. Then let's have a look at that cardboard thing here. In there you can find the user manual. And well, it's really crazy what they clone, so even the user manual looks one-to-one -one like the original thing. And yeah, um, just a few words about that. Now that's real piracy. Actually, if the custom sees that device here in the European region, they will probably destroy it. So be a bit careful with that. Now let's have a look at the micro USB charging cable. It even comes with the QR code here. So for a Samsung noob, it's really hard to tell at the first look if this is real or fake. And um, there's only something which looks a bit different, like here, um, the length of the connector here looks a bit too long in my opinion. I'm not really sure, I have to compare it with the real one. Then if you have a look at the headset, you can definitely see that this is fake. At least you get here the old headset. Now, if you have seen my unboxing on the S6 Edge, you get a new Samsung headset. But this one here is actually the old one, which you can also find um, in the Galaxy S5, for instance. And the pretty cool thing is that it comes with a gold-plated connector here, at least the color is gold. <laughs> and yeah, the quality um, of the in as well. It's not, yeah, it's okay. So you can get that fake headset for something like $5 on eBay. Now, charging accessories. Well, um, 
Um, the font here, it looks very different. Now, sorry for the focus, but it's very bright outside here and there's a foil on the charger, so it reflects all the light. Okay, now it comes with the Samsung logo, as you can see. Now, let's take off the foil, it's better for my lens. So there we go. And um, the charging accessories, so they look almost identical. Maybe it's even the same, but um, I really want to open one of them up to see how it looks from the inside. But well, um, you can see the font here looks different. So also the printing on the like Samsung here, that looks completely different. And I prefer real chargers because of quick charging at nine volts. This here is a normal charger, like five volts, one amp output, and this is absolutely nothing special. And I would definitely replace that with a um, good charger because, well, they can break down very easily, I guess. Okay, now that was the charger and that are basically all the accessories you can find inside of the package. Maybe you will get some gifts like a SD card reader or something or a SD card, but that's basically it and there's actually the same thing included which you can get with the real one. Then now let's go and let's quickly compare them. If you compare them side by side you will immediately notice some differences except of that the left one is the edge and the right one not. But yeah, if you have a look at the display then this time it looks really great. Both of them they are really black when they are turned off so this looks very identical and from the display it's very hard to tell if it's fake or not. But if you switch it on, then you will see that the display, well, it's a different level on the real one. It's the S AMOLED versus a cheap IPS panel. I mean, yeah, it, it looks okay. The colors here, they look definitely also good on the IPS panel. But the resolution, we have 720p against 2K. We have a great S AMOLED display against cheap IPS. Then if you check out here the bottom, then you can see the home button looks very identical. But yeah, um, on the real one we have a fingerprint scanner in there, on the fake one we just have a physical home button. And well, it's sliding a bit around, so left and right, up and down, just like um, people sometimes have problems with the real one of the home button. And here it's even worse, I would say, so sliding up and down doesn't feel really good when you press it. Okay, then um, if you have a look here at the front side, then you will see the black bar is maybe a bit bigger on the S6, but yeah, maybe it's different from the S6 to the S6 Edge. But um, the viewing angles are definitely good on both, but the viewing angles on the SM AMOLED display are definitely better. Now, if we have a look at the top, then you will see that the front-facing camera looks way bigger on the real one, and that's because the lens is bigger, the whole camera is bigger, which gives you better image quality. But not only that, usually also a bigger lens has a better aperture and can catch more light. So you will later see the comparison between the front-facing camera and, well, the real camera looks so much better. In the middle of the speaker, it's a bit thinner on the fake one, Samsung logo, and also the holes for light and proximity sense on the left side, they are a bit smaller here on the fake one. Now, all in all, um, it really feels like a S6. If you have a look at the frame, then you will see it's a metal frame and it has exactly the same dimensions like the real one. The only thing I don't like is that the buttons are sliding around a bit and the overall build quality could be better in my opinion. The SIM card tray is right over here because on the edge you have it on the top, but the SIM card tray should be exactly in the same spot like on a real and normal S6 and it also holds a nano SIM card. Then here at the top you will see we have a top microphone which is probably fake, I will take it apart later. Here in the middle we have the IR blaster which is fake on the fake one so it doesn't work. I tried with several remote controls but I think there's nothing in there so it's just a cap. Okay, then you can see the antennas, well, looks pretty good and really looks like the real one. Then let's have a quick look at the back cover, and the back cover on the old fake I had was really shit, so the glass just came off. Now there were just a few stripes of double-sided adhesive tape in there, and when it got hot during charging, the back cover just came off. And on this one here it looks quite stable, I'm using it now for two days and it doesn't come off. But well, um, let's have a look at the camera, now the camera lens on the real one much bigger. Also you will later see the images, they look much better on the real one. Here we have the um, heart rate monitor and the LED flash. Now the LED flash on the real one, it's a bit yellow in my opinion, or maybe golden even, and it looks strange on the real one I think. So I really like um, white LEDs and on this one here it's a bit more white but not that strong. You can see here the volume rockers, now on the edge they are thinner, but they should look um, almost exactly the same like on the real normal S6. Okay, at the bottom we have here the speaker, as you can see. Now speaker quality, um, not that good on the fake one. Then here in the middle we have the micro USB charging port. Bottom microphone is working on both. And here we have the 3.5mm headphone jack to connect a headset or headphones. Okay guys, now that's basically it. 
that are both phones from the outside, fake and real. And now let's go, let's quickly try the accessories and then let's see how such a fake looks from the inside. If you have seen my previous review, then you know that the back glass can be taken off, but you have to be very careful, it breaks easily, just like the front screen here. Just dropped it once, boom, it was cracked. But this is how it looks from the inside, and also this fake here will look exactly the same from the inside. Maybe just a little bit different, but they are very, very similar. Now we can just have a look, for instance, here at the micro SD card slot. It's really strange, so they're just using a similar board like in the iPhone clones, just a different case, and boom, the clone is there. Now it also comes with a micro SD card slot, like you would be able to upgrade the Intel memory, and it's even working. Here you can also see the number from the LCD, so um, if it breaks down, you have to Google or find the number on AliExpress. It's very hard to find replacement parts for such clones, because they're just using what they get. Cheap components, boom, we just buy 1000, we make the phone, and then, yeah, no components left anymore. So sometimes you cannot even find the correct ROM for such um, clones. Okay, now here we have um, the new fake, so the HDC S6. And we can just see if this fake cover here fits, because this was also included inside of the package. And um, yeah, this cover here looks a bit deformed, because um, it was outside of the package. And the s window here is working, but you cannot use the screen. I'm not sure why, maybe it just hangs up, or... well... I'm not really sure, so you cannot use the touch screen when there's that plastic thing over there. Okay, yeah, it's totally unusable in my opinion, so I would just go with a normal cover, and I have here a crystal clean cover from the S6 Edge. It's just a little bit different than the normal S6 cover, but yeah, um, it would also fit. And you also have no problem with real S6 covers, so that's actually the same, so you can just go there, buy one, and it'll fit on the clone. Now I know that S6 covers are currently totally overpriced. I paid 30 euro for a shitty back cover from Samsung, which is totally useless. But yeah, you can also buy those accessories from China. Um, sometimes they're not even that bad. And yeah, also the real accessories will fit here on the fake one. But now let's go and let's check out the Android performance. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're now in Android on both devices. Now yeah, the real one feels absolutely smooth. The fake one is a bit laggy. And if you have more things on the home screen, then it will probably start to lag a bit. Now the touch with theme is something I absolutely don't like. Um, yeah, they just make it to make it look like the real one, but anyway, the performance is pretty bad. We can just have a look here at the menu, and then we go here to the settings, so there we go. And let's get started, and let's have a look at about the device, so we can see on which Android version it is running, because in the description on AliExpress it says Android 5.0.2 KitKat. Well, the edge is so damn useless, I really hate it. But yeah, um, let's have a look at about the device, here you can see the Android version. And we have Lollipop on the real one, and hey, Lollipop on the fake one. But I don't trust this, guys, and let's try the easter egg, and you see, this is the KitKat easter egg. So, well, you can be sure, you get a spoofed version of Android, so it looks like Lollipop, but it's actually KitKat. Okay, if we do this here on the real one, you can see you get here that Android game, which is like Flappy Birds, but yeah, here on the fake one, we just have that KitKat easter egg. Then now let's go back and let's go quickly here through the settings. There's also a wireless update on the fake one, but you won't see any auto for a clone. They just release it with a firmware which may be buggy, but then yeah, it's sold and there's nothing to do anymore. Okay, we can just have a quick look at Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi works pretty good on the fake one, so I didn't expect this. Now the range is a bit lower than on the real one. Also the speed, we have 65 Mbits here on the fake one, 2.4 GHz. And we have a very strong 130 Mbits here on the real one. So you can see um, the difference in speed and 65 Mbits is the maximum you can get here on the fake one. Okay guys, then let's go back here, let's have a look at the rest of the settings. And you see the settings this time, they look very identical, so they did a pretty good job here on the touch with theme. Okay, um, wow, I really hate the Edge. Now, if you go for a Galaxy S6, don't buy the Edge version. It's really just useless. I mean, it looks absolutely great, but the Edge is a useless thing. Okay, now here you can see mobile hotspot and tethering. This is also working. We have Bluetooth in there, which is also working. Then um, connection settings, but there's no NFC there. So that's the only bad thing um, with MTK phones. You mostly get hot nod or some other crap, but you don't get NFC. Only on a couple of phones. Okay, then motion and gestures. This is also working and we have a proximity sensor, so we have air bras, air launcher, but well, I don't use that and seriously, I don't use that phone here a lot. So I also don't use the gestures. Okay, then let's go here to the personal settings. Well, this is really annoying and we can just have a look at lock screen and security. 
Then the funny thing is that those clones always come with a fake fingerprint function. And this is total crap because if you check this out, you go here to fingerprint unlock, then you can see the lock screen from the Galaxy S4 or S5. And it tells you to swipe over there, but <laughs> you can swipe over the screen and it says unlocked. And please don't even activate this. I once activated that and I couldn't go back to the system because it always said, yeah, wrong fingerprint. It's so stupid. Then let's have a look at the battery stats. Well, battery lifetime on that clone is much better than on the Galaxy S5 clones, but it's still maximum one day if you're a slight user so i drain that battery in six to seven hours maximum then it's dead but i also use gps and have um, the display timer on 30 minutes and maximum brightness so you can probably get through one day we can have a look at storage and everything you can see here on the fake one is fake like we have 32 gigs plus another 32 gigs but this is totally spoofed it just comes with eight gigabytes and yes you can definitely fake that so you just change some values and it scales up but um it's actually just eight gigabytes okay um on the real one 64 gigs and well samsung storage which is quite fast and can be encrypted and all that crap okay so let's go back here and let's have a look at the rest now i just swapped sim cards because i only have one and i did just put it in the clone for the test but we can do here a quick call let's just call a random and very popular number here in austria the roaming warning can be disabled in the settings this is very common and it's quite annoying so we disable that now um, that's the maximum volume of the speaker and you hear it's not really loud and yeah the real one is much louder, maybe double as loud. Okay, um, let's just end the call or maybe let's test the sensors. You can see um, light proximity sensor, everything working, shots of the display, so that's pretty good. And also here the dialer APK, it looks really almost the same, just very small differences. Okay, um, then let's have a quick look here at the messaging application. You will see that the keyboard looks different. So we have here the normal Android keyboard on the fake one and here the cool um, Samsung TouchWiz keyboard on the real one. Now typing also doesn't feel that good and we only have a two point capacitive touchscreen on the fake one. Now um, internet, so okay, um, we should open up a website. Um, yeah, browsing the web, no problem but you don't have 4G LT on the fake one, so you just have 3G and 2G, and you just have to be sure you have the correct frequencies for your country, so please double check that. That's always important when you buy any China phone. Okay, we're now in the menu, and I would say let's go and let's do a quick camera test. So let's go outside and let's do a quick comparison because you will see the camera maybe looks um, pretty equal, but um, the quality difference is huge. And once again, we're now here out of my garden to do a quick camera test. Well, the first thing you will notice is that you get much more on the picture on the real one. So it's much more wide angle, the colors look better, the overall sharpness, and yeah, the, the whole camera is just better on the, on the real one. Now um, let's just have a look at the shutter. So both cameras are not laggy. We have tap out to focus on both and you will just see the details. Everything is much sharp on the real one. Now shot on the real one, shot on the fake one. Yeah, both are pretty fast. We have touch out to focus, pretty accurate. Um, the lighting adjustment is maybe more accurate on the real one. So sometimes a bit over lightened on the fake one. But yeah, um, let's try a video mode. So there we go. And you see there's no pause button on the fake. Oh, yeah, there is at the top. So um, it looks a bit different here in the um, app, as you can see. We can also um, switch it to the front-facing camera. And that's probably the biggest difference ever. Now, Samsung has usually the most beautiful front-facing cameras ever. Just check this out. It's really wide angle here. We have face beauty mode activated. The skin color, the tone here, it looks really great. And on the fake one, it's really zoomed in and I'm holding it the same distance away from my body. So it's harder to take selfies and also the overall quality is not as good like on the real one. Then we can just go here to mode and you will see the mode um, on the fake one looks like the old mode option on the Galaxy S5. But here on the Galaxy S6 you can see it looks totally different. Like we have Ultra HD, we have fast motion, slow motion, tracking and you don't have any of those features on the fake one. So it's just a normal camera which looks a bit like um, the real one but it has no features the quality is much lower and yeah you actually get what you pay for it's just like this when you buy a clone we can have a quick look at the camera settings and well um here you can see the touch with settings so we have here the video size ultra hd 60 megapixels if you just check this out we have the basic settings then we have 9 12 16 so this is 100 percent interpolated this is um, for sure no 60 megapixel sensor and 
also if you check out the sample pictures which you can find down below in the description then you will see yeah the quality difference is huge and that's also why um, the Galaxy S6 or the real one is very very expensive and that fake one only costs about 140 120 dollars now here's a quick video test on both devices on the left side the fake one on the right side the real one just check out the difference it's amazing you have to see that now look how shaky um, it is on the clone and look how stable and steady it is on the real one it's just like you would have a steady cam now the electronic image stabilization on the real one it's it's wow it's stunning it's absolutely great it's just like in a real movie wow really really cool now some other things um it's very zoomed in on the fake one on the real one it's a very wide angle you get a lot here on the picture and the same goes for the colors. So the colors here on the real one, they are very tasty. Green is green and on the fake one it's a bit washed out. The microphone quality, I'm currently using here the fake one. We can also switch to the real one. And you will also hear um, that there's a huge difference in the microphone quality because we have more um, microphones on the real one and also the quality is totally different. Now let's have a look at some color comparison. And well, Macro mode, both are pretty good, but you can see on the real one, the macro um, picture here looks much better. And also the colors, wow. So, well, um, the camera, I would say it's okay um, if you really don't care about the camera. But if you want to have a really good camera, you should definitely go for the real Samsung Galaxy S6. Okay guys, now here's a quick front-facing camera comparison. And just check this out. So the difference is so huge. Now, on the real Galaxy S6, so on the edge, um, it's just like a steady cam. You walk and the picture, it's, it's not moving, it's completely still, it's absolutely amazing. Also, it's much more wide angle than the clone, so you can see the clone is very zoomed in. Face beauty mode looks much better on the real one than on the fake one. You get more on the picture, as you can see. Um, also, it's not that laggy, it's just a bit laggy on the clone. And the colors, just check out the colors, how good they look on the real S6 and how washed out they look here on the fake one. Now well, that's the price you pay when you go for a clone. So you also get a front-facing camera which doesn't look that good, but it's also much, much cheaper. So that was the camera comparison and yeah, you get what you pay for once again. So camera is really lower on the Galaxy S6 clone. Then we also have other things like the S Planner, we have S Health and well, it really looks like the real thing. But if you open up the applications, you will see it's a older version or it just looks a bit different. So we can just try this with the S Health application. And yeah, you probably know my opinion on that heart rate monitor. If you really need that or the UV detection to tell if the sun is shining or to tell your heart rate, you must be a real retard. Sorry, but I think that feature is so completely useless. I mean, it's cool when you have a sport watch which can really measure your pulse and then send it to your smartphone. Okay, maybe that would be cool for tracking, but that feature here is such a crap. I mean, with two fingers and a couple of seconds, I'm faster to measure my pulse than with this crap here and this is probably even more accurate and yeah it's a cool feature for marketing but in my opinion this is total crap now you can see here on the fake one we have 91 beats per minute then let's see what we get here on the real one yeah 83 now um well it could work it could not work it could be a random number generator i really can't tell but um i will i guess i'm currently speaking i'm holding that thing here so yeah it's a bit higher than normal Okay, um, let's have a look here at the menu. We have um, Galaxy apps on both and on the real one, uh, sorry, on the fake one, we have Samsung apps, so older version. And same goes, for instance, what the fuck is Fun Club? Looks like, I don't know, it looks similar to Galaxy apps, but well, I never used Fun Club before. Then we have the Play Store on both. That's really important because on some Chinese smartphones, you don't have the Play Store. So sometimes you have to download Qi apps, then flash a custom recovery and then just um, flash the zip. It's really annoying. But here on the fake one, well, it comes with the Google Play Store and it's also working as you can see. So apps, games, movies, actually the same on both devices. Okay, so Play Store included. Um, let's have a look at the other apps. Maybe we can find something interesting. So let's go back. Okay, FM radio, but you have to use your headset as antenna. 
then well we have more apps than bloatware pre-installed on the real one i really hate all those apps they are quite useless and we have here the proximity sensor recalibration app this is really important because sometimes it could happen that for instance the sensor doesn't shut off the display or um, air gas is not working then just recalibrate it here in the app you can do it in just a couple of seconds also tripadvisor um, is in there once again in some older clones tripadvisor was a virus so make sure you install gdata and scan it but here on this one um, it didn't find anything so um, it looks quite okay and not infected but always when you buy such a clone better install Sophos or Trip, uh, sorry, or Gdata or something because um, yeah, there could be spyware on there, just to be sure. Now Airbrows is working, but the proximity sensor is miscalibrated. So when it's not working for you like this, you just um, open up the proximity sensor app and then you can recalibrate it. That's actually very easy. So you just make sure that it don't cover the sensor, then you hit calibrate and boom, it should actually work. All right, guys, now that's basically it. And now I would say let's do just a quick test of the LED flash. Then we'll have some sample videos, a GPS test, benchmarks, and after this, you will hear my conclusion about that smartphone. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now in the darkness and here's a quick screen test. Now, well, the viewing angles are much better on the S AMOLED display, as you can see. So yeah, this looks definitely better than on the clone. We can also have a quick look at the brightness and the brightness is actually almost the same on both. Then let's have a quick look at the Android status bar and you will see that some things here are definitely different. So we have here a lot of features like also power saving mode, which um, doesn't really do anything. So it just switches off the colors, but nothing more. So it doesn't downclock the CPU or anything. Then for instance, we have a multi window somewhere right over here, which is actually not working. It's just a sidebar. So many, many things here are fake. Same goes for NFC. There is no NFC and NFC is not working on that thing here, even though you can find the setting here. Okay, then um, let's have a quick look at the flashlight. We have the torch setting right over here, which we don't have on the, on the fake one, but we can just have a quick look, for instance, at the flashlight application. Let's start it. Okay, wow. So let's check this out. Now the LED of the real one is much stronger, but it's also, as you can see, a bit yellow or golden. And here on the fake one, you can see um, it's very white, so that looks good, but it's not really strong. So we can do a quick comparison. That's the um, clone. And let's shut it off. And that's the real one. As you can see, um, the real one, the LED is much stronger, but it's also a bit yellow. Maybe the pictures in the darkness, they will look strange. I will just take it to pictures and you'll find them down below in the description. Now here's a quick GPS test on the Galaxy S6 clone and surprisingly GPS works really good and accurate on the smartphone. I didn't expect that because um, it's a metal body clone and usually metal body clones like for instance iPhone 6 clones, they have very very bad GPS. But here as you can see um, GPS is working and quite accurate. I'm using Psychic offline navigation. I don't have a SIM card in there so we don't have a GPS. This is um, just the GPS from the hardware, so from the phone. And what you should do is you should definitely rewrite the GPS config like you should set it to your country then you should root the smartphone and download MT EPO so it downloads the latest EPO files and this improves your GPS a lot maybe you won't even find a fix if you don't do that so make sure you do it and now as you can see GPS is actually working good what I want to do now is do a quick GPS test comparison so we can see how the signal compares to the real one because well um, the whole signal level will be um, I guess much lower than on the real one. Okay guys, I just found a quick problem because um, for instance in SideCheck it always takes the predicted road. As you can see, um, it looks like I would take the exit, but no, I actually don't take the exit. And then um, after it gets the new location, it then jumps back. So, well, as you can see, this is quite confusing. So the GPS doesn't seem to be that accurate. So if you miss exit, um, it's quite confusing for 10-15 seconds until it gets the correct position again. So really strange. So here's also a quick GPS test on the GPS test application. And we're currently here on a mountain or actually a hill near my hometown. And I was driving around for half an hour with GPS and it was working actually quite good. But there's only the small problem that it's not too accurate. So it takes the predicted road in Sajik, for instance, then jumps back on the road. This can be quite annoying if there are um, um, different roads and you just want to follow one and then it always shows you on the wrong one. But yeah, let's do not talk about this. Let's have a quick look at the GPS test application. 
Well, we have a pre defects, we have a accuracy of 13 feet. Usually when you start driving, accuracy goes up, um, up to 30 feet or something. Here we have 12 satellites in view, 6 in use, so not really many in use. And the signal level, well, not that good. You can see some of them are green, so over 30 is green, and also here's some red or gray, which means not connected. But we can just have a look here at the Galaxy S6 Edge and just check this out here. The signal, this is absolutely great look how many green bars we have and the funny thing is we have more satellites in use on this one than here in view and this is because samsung uses some i don't know garmin or gps chips so they're really great and not that crap from media tech which is included in the whole soc actually it's not crap there are some phones which work really good with the mtk m6582 for instance also the newer chipsets if the antenna layout is good you will have a pretty decent signal but don't expect too much from the gps so the accuracy will not be at, as good but um you see accuracy 20 feet here see 13 feet but this is only when we stand still so when we start driving accuracy will also go up so you will get the overall better gps performance definitely on the real one but gps is also working here on the fake one Alright guys, we're now here at the end of this review and I hope it was helpful and could show you the differences between a cheap fake, so a pirated product actually, and the real one. Now you see you pay, you get what you pay for, I always say it wrong, but um, it doesn't matter. So if you pay $140 you cannot expect that it has the same features and performs like the real one. And also um, if you buy something with the logo I would be really careful um, at customs, it depends on your country, but well, iPhone clones got already destroyed in my country. So well then the money was gone and the phone was also gone. All in all, well, um, it performs better than the older clone I had, so you see the other one was falling apart. This one here seems to be quite stable. 
Also, you can see some differences like um, the camera is a bit bigger and some other things. So um, it, see, it looks like it would be an improved version. But um, this is still far away from being perfect. It's still the old MTK65A2 chipset. You can get the chipset for a damn $5 or something. Then you design a board, you just copy the design, and boom, you have a $60 device. And then you sell it for $100, 40 dollars profit, and that's basically it. Well, um, I wouldn't mind it to use it as a secondary phone. So if I go um, to um, the disco or something and I drink 10 beers, well, I'm a guy who always drops the phone and then I wake up and look at my phone, boom, screen is cracked. So for that, yeah, it's okay to call the ambulance or my girlfriend to get me out of the club, but well, I wouldn't use that as a main phone, seriously. I always want to be honestly. And the real one was definitely worth the money, but um, it's also a bit overpriced in my opinion. But if the clones would improve, if, if they would come with a decent screen, better build quality and the MTK6732, I would probably um, think about using that. But well, um, with that specs, probably not. Once again guys, thank you so much for watching, I really hope it was helpful and I really hope I see you again in my next videos. So have a nice day and bye bye.